All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to talk about stage fright and how to deal with it. I am not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm not here to give you medical advice. I'm just going to explain to you one or two times when I really had to deal with stage fright and how I was able to get through it and basically just right the ship, so to speak. All right, let's get to it. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I've worked on cruise ships for 21 years. I quit in October of 2019, two months before everything started going down. But in my experience being a cruise ship orchestra house musician, I had the honor and privilege of being musical director, band leader, whatever, on several occasions. So <laughs> let's step back a little bit. This company that I worked for, I absolutely hated. So I quit, went to another company, quit that company, wound up going back to that original company as the band leader. Now they just elevated that position from band leader to musical director. So as a band leader, you're just in charge of your group. As a musical director, you are in charge of all the musicians on this ship. So it's a big responsibility, but I've done this kind of thing before, so I'm not really concerned with my ability to do the job itself. What I am concerned with is how much I hate working for this company. Now, I just quit the other cruise line that I was with. I needed some work. They offered me just two months as a fill-in during Christmas and New Year's. Christmas and New Year's is always, always, always the worst time of year. It is the busiest, and this was doing California, Hawaii. Basically, it's a 15-day cruise, so they have a lot of entertainment. Now, as a cruise ship musician, our job generally entails acts that fly on the ship. We'll rehearse their show for an hour or two, and then we do that show that night. Usually at night, there's two shows. So I get to this ship understanding, wow, this is I got my work cut out for me. So first thing you want to do is meet the band. I join the ship with the drummer, which is always scary. Because you don't know what kind of drummer you have. So the guy who was musical director before I got there was a drummer. I knew the guy. My His first contract was my third contract. And here's a funny story. <laughs> the guy on that ship, who was the, uh, the band leader, was at one point Dolly Parton's musical director. <laughs> so he was an older dude, bigger dude. He was real quiet real scary, and one of the best drinking buddies you could possibly have. <laughs> so this is how he conducted. He would play bass. He would be like, and you knew to pay attention to him and watch out. If you weren't, you were done. Because back then you could fire somebody for not being able to do their job. So we get this guy on from Australia. He's my roommate. And I'm just like, look, man, you got to, you know, it's his first contract. He goes, he works all night, goes to bed at like four or five o'clock in the morning, working through all this stuff goes out, plays the first show, and he misses like this one little thing. <laughs> and he comes into the cabin. He's like, man, I don't want to say the guy's name. <laughs> so I'm going to call him um, Rex. That's not his real name. But he came in and he was like, man, Rex just threatened to fire me. It was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, this is what he said to him. He was like, he was playing bass and he made that little mistake and he looked over and said, I fired the last guy that made that mistake. <laughs> My boy was just terrified. And I promise you, he never, ever made that mistake again. Because the drummer that was there before him was just awful. I don't know how he got the job. He went to some other cruise line and he was amazing. Because that's generally what happened. I'm not going to get into that. But if you're in a band and the musical director, the band leader is the drummer, he is essentially guiding every single beat, stringing everybody along. Everybody's holding hands, so to speak. But if you're anybody in the band other than that and you're a musical director, you have to make sure that everybody knows their part. Because on a cruise ship, 
you don't conduct like this. No, I'm playing saxophone. I got to play my part. I need you to know when your part is coming. So at a real critical part, I'll count off a different tempo. I'll give a cue, but I can't be up there like this. This is insane. If you ever see anybody on a cruise ship doing this, they're just showing off and being an idiot. At any rate, the whole band is basically used to being handheld through everything. It was one of the most frustrating things because most of the band was either new or didn't speak English as a first language. So this piano player, complete drugged out space cadet dude. He's a really good piano player though. He crashed a show of this female guest entertainer before. So I had to keep my eye on this guy. English is not his first language. So I always gotta make sure he understands what it is that I'm telling him before I let him leave. I gotta ask him to say it back to me, this kind of thing. The bass player is American, but he's a new hire. He's on his first contract. So he doesn't have that cruise ship experience of knowing all of this large, large body of work and what all these guest entertainers generally do with it. The drummer, he's a new guy. English is not his first language. I'm deliberately not telling you what country these people are from, but I love this guy. He's a great drummer, but he's new and has no clue what's going on. <laughs> and English is not his first language. One of the most influential people I've ever worked on on a cruise ship was the alto player, older guy. We used to be roommates during my first contract. I went from one older guy, alto sax player to this guy. And both of those guys taught me more than what I ever learned in college. But now he's just drunk all the time. So I gotta make sure he's all right. The trumpet player, one of the worst musicians I've ever worked with in my life, ever. Just unprofessional, real mediocre, decent, okay trumpet player who thought he was God. This guy would just deliberately start playing his own tempo as loud as possible whenever he felt like the tempo wasn't right. And I almost, it almost got violent with this dude. Like seriously, that bad. And my boy, the trombone player, <laughs> I just, I never heard any, I never had any problems out of this guy. He was the most ideal model employee, second only to this harp player that I had who was from Argentina. And that dude was just dressed to the nines all the time, handled all of his business. He was perfect. But at any rate, this is the band that I have to deal with all the time. Now, whenever you have a group of phenomenal athletes on a really bad team, they fire the coach. Now I'm the coach in this situation. So I know it's my responsibility to get these guys together. So one thing I keep trying to drive home is that I'm not gonna hold your hand. You gotta take responsibility. You gotta take ownership of your part. I'm not gonna walk you through that. If it's that much of a problem, I can't use you. I couldn't fire anybody anyway because it was Christmas and New Year's and it would have cost the company too much money. That's another big, big thing. Let's take a break, y'all. All right, this is an interesting story, but where does the stage fright come in? From the day I get on this ship, remember, I hate this company. I hate them. I am just a live wire the entire time. It is nonstop, 24-hour phone calls, just any and everything somehow is my responsibility from me being really, really busy, being in the middle of a show and I'm getting a call about the string quartet, wearing a t-shirt and eating pizza. I mean, just don't call me for this kind of stuff, man. You know, I just, there's way too much stuff I need to focus on. So at any rate, we come to this show. I'm on the ship for about three weeks already and I just absolute live wire. Anything could set me off. I'm nervous, terrified all the time. Everything's gonna go wrong. We had the worst production team I've ever worked with in 21 years with a production manager who did absolutely nothing. The guy just sat around and expected his team to know how to do everything. We almost had a piano crush a guest entertainer because it wasn't secured right. And one night that piano was left on stage, unattended, unsecured, and the thing rolled off the stage and was upside down. People came into the theater and there's a piano that's there upside down. I mean, just, so I have to take on the duties of production manager also. And that is, at least when it came to, you know, what we did in the theater. But at any rate, we get this female guest entertainer on board. I'm not gonna tell your name. None of it was her fault. So 
Whenever you work with female entertainers, these guest entertainers, singers, their shows are always really, really complicated. Way more complicated than what they're worth. This lady's show was so complicated. And I got this band full of new hires and people that don't speak English and drunk alto play. <laughs> so she's got this one Barbara Streisand medley. And I, for those of you who've worked on ships, you know about the Barbara Streisand medleys. It is, it's got at least 15 different tempo changes. Now I know all these songs. I've been on ships for seven, eight years now. Like I've played all this stuff. I know it. So it's like, I got to get this band to be able to know this. Her rehearsal takes like two and a half hours, anything longer than an hour and a half. And you're going to start forgetting stuff, man. It's like, oh, what did we do in that section? How does it, you know? <laughs> so the pressure is just mounting and mounting and mounting. We get to this Barbara Streisand number. On that ship, we did a production show that had a Barbara Streisand medley in it. And in one of those songs, there's one bar difference from the ship's version to her version. Her version has an extra bar in it. In rehearsal, I went to stand up to cue this thing and I caught that there was an extra bar. And I said to myself, you know what? I better make sure that I mark this thing in. Guess what I didn't do? I didn't mark it in. I really liked her show. I actually had like a pretty significant speaking part. It's one of those things where this sexy female singer is interacting with the band and I'm, you know, I'm doing this sexy voice. Yeah, girl, you know what time it is. Yeah, girl, you know what time it is. This kind of like really nice banter that helps move the show along. All the while during this song, I am a complete nervous wreck. I'm just like, man, I hope these guys can understand their parts. If she starts giving a separate cue, if she says something, I hope their English is good enough to understand. I hope that these new hires are able to keep up and follow along. So we get to this, that junction point in that Barbara Streisand song, right before it's the one, I can't think of the name of the song right now, I'll put it in the thing, but it's the one where it goes to like this little breakdown Da, da, dee, da, da. And then there's like a little, it goes into like a halftime thing. It's it's really good song, man. I really like Barbara Streisand stuff. But we get there and sure enough, I stand up and I think to myself, I was supposed, something was supposed to, something. And the ship moves just a little bit. I freak out for half a second and then I just cue it. I cued the thing one bar early and half the band went with me and the other half did exactly what they were supposed to do. <laughs> so this whole time I was worried about all these other guys in the band. It all came down to me and I crashed the heck out of that thing, man. It was so, so bad. Usually if something like that happens, you can ride it out to another point and then just fix it and pick it up from there. But this was so bad. I was just thinking in my head like, oh man, she's going to have to stop it. She's, she's going to have to stop the song. One of the worst things you can possibly do is stop the band because of some mistake and have to start over again. I mean, we're already, this is a long medley anyway. Where are we going to pick it up? It, it demoralizes the rest of your contract when something like that happens. Not not just that show. That was the only the first show. We had another show to do. I mean, is she going to cut it the next time? Is the whole band, the, the whole energy is going to go down. Everybody's going to play real scared and timid. It's going to be weak and boring and horrible if she has to stop this song. And I'm thinking to myself, she's got to stop it. it. It's so bad. There, there's no other thing to do except to stop it. Sure enough, she stops it and she just turns around in the middle of this performance. She's like, hey, guys, like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? And I just I'm still standing up. And I just that was the high point of complete and total failure. Like all that stage fright had built up to me not having done my homework, me not having prepared for failure, me I did it. It was all on me. So now there's this dead silence for about four seconds. 
And I look down at the music and I see that I have that microphone that I was using to do that banter with her. And the light bulb goes off in my head and I grab it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. It was all my fault. I almost fell off the stage. Don't even worry about it. I got you. Hey, you'll hear it. We'll pick it up. So there's that one part. There's this horn riff. It's like a bop, ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba So I just take a look at the band and I play that lick. Da 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 ba ba da ba do ba. As soon as I hit that note, the drummer just goes bop, do bop, do back, do bam. The whole band comes in and it is the most awesome thing I've ever heard in my life because for the rest of that song and the rest of that show, we absolutely crushed it. Even the second show, she considered working it into her act. And I was like, look, let's not do that right now. Let's work about that next time. I even think that later on when she started doing her show, she actually worked that bit in in that part just to give it a little more because the Barbra Streisand thing is all serious and whatnot. And her show was kind of comedy serious. But at any rate, I was able to recover from that because had I not picked it up from there, we would have just had to forget the rest of the song and just go on with the next number. I mean, just, I can't, I've been on a show when that's happened before and where I wasn't the musical director. I was nowhere even near qualified to be directing a band when that happened in its worst possible configuration. And believe me, the rest of that contract was just weird and horrible. So what did I learn from that? Well, I definitely had my experience to back me up, to pick up on that little thing where one second I could have just accepted failure or I could just find some kind of way out of it. Just do me re-rehearse that one part with that dot, 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 because it was such a long, it took us probably an hour just to get through that one medley of Barbara Streisand stuff, which is why it took so long for the whole rehearsal, but I looked back on it and I was like, you know, I was horribly unprepared to fail. I had a college recital, my senior recital when I was in college, half classical, half jazz. I made this catastrophic mistake of not ever practicing the entire classical portion all at once. I only practiced it in little pieces. And I started freaking out and that stage fright thing just kicked in. I crushed it. I was just like, no matter what, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a classical major. I'm a jazz major. But the amount of work that I put into playing that classical piece, I wrote in every little detail, vibrato on this note, every breath mark. So I knew if I kept playing, I could stagger my breathing to where I could get everything back on track. It's all marked there. Just keep playing. Once I got through basically the first movement, then I was in good shape. That physiological response kicked in and I was good to go. But again, I was unprepared for failure. As a musician, we when we start, we get used to failing and being able to shrug it off because it requires so much failure before you can start sounding good on any instrument. You got to get it wrong a whole lot before you can ever really start to sound good and start getting it right, making music and performing in front of people. And it's this gradual thing where over time you just wind up getting used to it. But at no point do we ever prepare ourselves for failure. And this is something that I learned. And to this day, whenever I can feel the whole, the butterflies start to flap up, I'm just like, okay, if this fails, how do I get my brain just automatically goes there? How do I recover from that failure? And that's really it. Stage fright to me, I think is really just a fear of failure. But if you can minimize that fear, take that fear away, then you're going to be all right. Really, you, you'll be used to failing and recovering from that. So there's no part of it that's an actual collapse or failure. I find it most intriguing when comedians bomb and how they just keep it going. It's like, oh man, I bombed. Charlie Murphy bombed. 
and called up Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy's response was, so? <laughs> it's like, so? Then he bombed again. Dave Chappelle bombed in Detroit. There's some funny stories on the internet about him bombing like twice in Detroit. Bill Burr, I think, is one of the funniest unbombing stories where apparently there were a bunch of people before him. Check out Bill Burr, the Philly incident, where everybody that was going out was getting booed. Not everybody, but most people. And Bill Burr just went out there and just attacked the audience. And it's one of the most legendary comic stand-up <laughs> ever but at any rate i do want to leave you guys with this sorry this video was so long i like telling you guys my little cruise ship story so many of you guys have wanted me to go into a little more detail about that stuff but <laughs> i'm glad i can share this kind of stuff with you but at any rate fear of failure is what you need to do at least that's what helped me addressing my fear of failure and that helps to quell that uncontrollable physiological response that we associate with stage fright. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.